Hey everyone and welcome to the second part of my AMD Navi video coverage, which in this case takes the form of a closer look at the Radeon 5700 XT, $400 higher end offering in the lineup, pitched against the Nvidia RTX 2060 Super. Think of that as a very slightly less powerful RTX 2070 with a nice $100 price cut. Good stuff! Well, the arrival of the supercars has shaken up the GPU status quo somewhat, necessitating a price cut from AMD before the cards even launched. So clearly there's a delicate price versus performance balancing act going on here. And in this video, we'll try to get to the bottom of that. Right then, well, let's kick off with a physical inspection of the card, and there it is. I've got to admit, I don't think it's much of a looker as such. The styling is a little love it or hate it, but there's a sense of heft and quality to it in the hand. I think we're looking at the same basic PCB in there as the vanilla 5700, but with a new shroud with higher quality materials and yes, a backplate. Power inputs consist of a 6-pin, 8-pin setup, just like the 5700, while the display outputs on the rear of the card consist of three display ports and HDMI 2.0. It's pretty much been the AMD standard since the Fury X days, though the ports themselves are the latest and greatest in terms of bandwidth. Well, the display ports for sure, with compression output allowing compatible monitors to run 4K 120 with no chroma subsampling over a single cable, which is nice. Quick look at the specs here. The 5700 XT has the fully enabled Navi 10 processor with 40 active compute units, the full complement, versus the 36 in the 5700 non-XT and the 64 of, well, Vega 64. Clocks are higher than the standard 5700 and much higher than Vega in real-life gaming, while the memory setup sees AMD transitioning away from super expensive HBM2 to the alternative still quite expensive GDDR6. There's 8 gigs here on both Radeon Navi cards across a 256-bit interface for 448 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. It's interesting to see that on paper at least, Vega 64 looks kind of competitive, but with the move to AMD's more refined RDNA architecture, the firm says that Navi's 40 CUs can outperform Vega's 64 with a 14% improvement in overall performance. We'll put that to the test later on, but suffice to say I found that even the vanilla 5700 is faster than Vega. So the XT being quicker, essentially a given, right? The competition, well back in the dark days when the XT was priced at $450, you'd look towards NVIDIA's $500 RTX 2070 Super as a better bet. Fair bit more performance, more capable as a 4K GPU, and with ray tracing, variable rate shading, and other forward-looking features that Navi just doesn't have. But with less than 48 hours to spare, AMD dropped the price of the XT to $400, putting it on collision course with the new RTX 2060 Super, which is basically a very slightly slower 2070. The original performance target for AMD to beat with this higher-end Navi card. So without further ado, let's dig into the benches. Performance is king after all. Now, similar to the 5700, I view this as a 1440p card, so that's where my measurements are going to focus. But do check out the Digital Foundry Eurogamer review for Navi, where 1080p and 4K measurements are also there for your interactive viewing pleasure. The vanilla 5700 has some more interesting competition with the last gen Vega and the standard RTX 2060, so check out my other Navi vid for that. But for the XT, this is going to be a straight Navi versus Super Shootout. Yeah, the truth is I rendered out all of these performance graphs before AMD did their price cut. So the 2070 Super is $100 more than any other card here. So not surprisingly, it's pretty much always the best performer. However, with that said, there are one or two interesting surprises in here that do look pretty good for AMD. We're going to kick off with Wolfenstein the New Colossus and some fascinating figures here. What's immediately obvious when playing this game at a high frame rate, well, AMD side has some really intrusive stutters that do impact the experience and you can see them here on the frame time graph, while Nvidia is fairly smooth sailing. However, the raw numbers look pretty good. Despite the $100 price differential, the XT has 95% of the performance of the 2070 Super, 
with a 14 point lead over the 2060 Super, its closest price competitor. Good strong start for AMD then, well apart from that horrible stutter. Metro Exodus again at 1440p and some interesting results here as well. On the face of it, another good result for AMD. The vanilla 5700, pretty close to the more expensive 2060 Super, while the XT is at a kind of midpoint between the uh, two Supers, 2060 and 2070. But I had some genuine weirdness with this one. Here at 1080p, both Navi cards are performing well under par. The similarities here are suggesting a CPU bottleneck, even though I'm running under DX12, which generally likes AMD hardware. But is it actually a CPU limitation, as performance at 4K is, quite aptly, a nuclear disaster for Navi? Kind of curious, but definitely an outlier. Assassin's Creed is typically a hostile environment for AMD GPUs, so let's go into Odyssey prepared for a poor result. But as you can see, the benchmark acquits itself pretty nicely at 1440p. 2060S is only 3% ahead, and you can see that the standard 5700 is a match for the RTX 2060. So in a title I expected to be something approaching a worst case scenario, AMD's holding up pretty well there. What I would say though is that the XT only has an 8.5% lead over the standard 5700, and you'd expect more than that. The gap closes up still further in the legacy AC Unity actually a game where the depth of field has historically been ruinous to AMD GPUs, but no longer. It's a welcome return to Novigrad City in The Witcher 3, where both RTX 2060 and 2060 Super are beaten, though not to a great degree by the new Navi cards. Importantly, consistency is improved over Vega 2, so the traditional smoothness I've seen here on Nvidia in this part of the game now translates to AMD 2, which is pretty good going. AMD's lead extends at 4K2, and with judicious settings tweaks, I do see the XT as a fairly decent 4K gaming card. Though yeah, 1440p for me personally really is the sweet spot with this one. More good news for AMD in Rise of the Tomb Raider, which once again sees the 5700 and the XT outperform their price point counterparts from Team GeForce. Both of the new Navi cards are about 10% to the better, stacked up against 2060 and 2060 Super. And interestingly enough, the performance differentials there widen in AMD's favour on the 5700 with Shadow the Tomb Raider, constricting a little between XT and 2060 Super. Then there are the games that actually kind of spread their wings running on AMD kit. Let's move over to Far Cry 5, where both 5700 and the XT enjoy a 13-14% to lead over the RTX 2060 and its super equivalent. At the same price points, it's pretty good going, with a similar profile at 4K resolution too. It's a 12 point difference between 5700 and the XT, which is an improvement, but again, kind of want a little more. You know, when I first started on this review, I honestly thought AMD had doomed itself with its initial pricing. Super effectively brought a price cut to the 2070 in its new guise as the 2060S, while the 2060's cost had a haircut. AMD following suit puts its cards back into contention, even though I have some reservations I'll go into in the conclusion. Further good news for AMD though in Ghost Recon Wildlands, which actually sees the RTX 2070 Super see some competition from the XT. 2070S is just a point or two ahead of the AMD headliner here, with a 10 point lead over the 2060 Super that is its nearest price competitor. And yeah, AMD hardware really thrives on Battlefield games. Here's the mature Battlefield 1 first, where the 5700 XT is only a hair's breadth away for matching 2070S performance with a 12 point lead over the 2060 Super. It's pattern repeated again in the more modern Battlefield 5 where once again the XT is effectively a match for the 2070 Super, card that's $100 more expensive. The lead over 2060 Super extends to almost 15% here. Finally, can the mighty Crisis 3 spoil the party? Well at this point the XT only has a small lead over the 2060 Super and although you can't see it here, it's basically on par the 2070. All of which is to say it's pretty good and better than the typically poor Assassin's Creed Odyssey performance, but obviously I've demonstrated much improved results elsewhere. So where does this leave us then? Well, first of all, that price cut really has proven essential for AMD simply because 
we can't escape the fundamental truth that the world of 3D rendering is moving on, like it or not. A new generation of consoles is coming and we can expect the feature set of graphics technology to move on as well. It's evolving and Nvidia is ready while this first generation of RDNA cards clearly aren't. In the here and now, ray tracing, variable rate shading, mesh shaders and whatnot, you can consider them as value added extras, but putting them into a console turns them into staples. Now, if you're willing to punt on me being wrong, you really can't argue with the new Navi cards. You pay about 14% more for the XT for typically around 10% more performance than the standard 5700. So with that in mind, the non-XT card kind of provides better value. But yeah, the advantages the 5700 has against uh, 2060, specifically more memory, doesn't apply to comparisons with the 2060 Super which pretty much has exactly the same RAM setup. It's a case of stronger performance now at the same price point with the XT, but with the nagging feeling that maybe we're on the cusp of change and features will emerge that will become the standard where the RTX cards will be more future-proof and these first-gen Navis won't. And yes, at the same time, we're kind of left with the situation where once again, AMD has kind of fallen short from its performance targets. We've got a 2070 Super here, which is indeed faster for the most part than anything Navi has to offer. Meanwhile, 2080 Super still to come, RTX 2080 Ti still at the top of the pile. So yeah, looking for more from AMD in the future. But that's all from me right now. Please like and subscribe to support the work we do here at Digital Foundry. Ring the bell for instant notifications when we publish a new video. And yes, please do consider the DF Patreon. Your direct support for the team makes a huge difference. And yes, our videos just look a ton better in source file format, viewed on your computer or especially on your living room TV. That's where I'm leaving things for now. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of this performance marathon. And I'll see you soon.